Martin, but his best player is a freshman. It's Relaford, McLemore, and Elijah Johnson at the point with Witte inside the complimentary player, Kevin Young. Bad Mata is doing a marvelous job with this lineup. Lenzel Smith, Aaron Kraft, Sam Thompson, and then up front, Ravenel, Thompson, and Deshaun Thomas. Bad Mata has the best winning percentage among Big Ten coaches since he came into the league, and a pair of trips to the Final Four for him, including last year, losing by two in the national semifinals to this Kansas team. Four Final Four trips among our officiating crew, Higgins, Zanzier, and Oglesby, and we're underway. Both of these teams will play man-to-man -man defense and look to push it at every opportunity. Johnson has a great stroke. That one's off the back iron. Tapped out and run down by Lenzel Smith Jr. Only to have it knocked away by Relaford. Every 50-50 play will be important to both of these coaches today. Effort won't really be an issue for this game, but one thing from Kansas' standpoint, they have not been a good rebounding team, the way that Bill Self would like to see them. Is this the opportunity for them to maybe have a breakout game on that offensive glass? Well, in my mind, guys, this is a benchmark game. Both of these teams are giving themselves grades on how they perform in the areas that give you a chance to win against another high-level yeah. opponent. Each team has lost once. Both felt they should have won the two they lost and really haven't been challenged since. Right. Kansas lost to Michigan State down in Atlanta, and the Buckeyes lost at Duke in late November. McLemore off the curl, and he drains the tray. And then how about the execution there? Again, four seniors in that starting lineup. How rare is it to have a major college program that starts four seniors? Bill Self has that luxury working for him today. And then his red shirt freshman, the guy you just saw spray that jump shot, McLemore, may be the best player on the floor. Thomas. Off the back rim, Elijah Johnson spreading down the floor. McLemore off the skip pass was bothered defensively by a most bothersome player in college basketball, Eric Kraft. Probably the best perimeter defender in the country. He is just relentless at attacking you when you have the ball. He's physical, Greg, and he has tremendous lateral quickness. So guys aren't able to get around him, and then he's strong enough that if you do get half a shoulder by, he can body you back out of position. That time on the blow by, Young stepped in with some help. I think um, it will be controlled. The Kansas fans thought it might have been deflected. And from a strategy standpoint, if you're Kansas, what you want to do is make Aaron Kraft a score. If you go back to that Duke game, he was only 3 of 15 from the field. If he can't facilitate at times, Ohio State can struggle offensively. Yeah, that's a good point, and he struggled scoring the ball in his last three games as we get an offensive foul call on the Jayhawks here. Kevin Young with the illegal pick. Yeah, looking at Kraft, the last five games, just 23 points on 9 of 27 shooting. But he does have 26 assists and only seven turnovers. So you're right, Greg. He much, he's much more comfortable facilitating and leading without necessarily looking to score for his team. Dogged by Johnson, Kraft pulls up and sets up the half court. And we haven't talked about it, but Elijah Johnson is not a slouch no. from a defensive <laughs> standpoint <laughs> either. He gets after it on the <laughs> Off the baseline comes Sammy Thompson, the sophomore from Chicago. Thad Mata says he may be the best athlete he's ever had at Ohio State. And, and he may be the X factor in this game. We know about Lindsell Smith and Deshaun Thomas' ability to score it consistently. Can he be that third option for the Buckeyes? Aguilera trying to create, has it knocked away. Thompson again, the pirouette, but rejected by Withy. Good opportunity, though, by Ohio State to try to attack in transition. And here, beautiful spin move, and then look at the control of the body by Withy. Yeah. Ravenel and Withy banging each other inside. Good job by Evan Ravenel to keep a body on Withy. That'll be something to keep an eye on, too, guys, the physicality in this game. By the way, that was Withy's 55th block. He has 11 fouls. Oh! All season long. How about that for a ratio? Yeah, you talk about the Sabre metrics lovers out there. That's a major number. Five to one, blocks the foul. Well, that's a nice look from Young into Withy. Stays with it, tips it back through with the left hand. And we talk about his 
his impact from a defensive standpoint, but there's where the improvement, maybe the most improved player in America, when you look at him offensively, you would have never thought they would go to him as an offensive player. Kansas by two, three minutes gone here in Columbus. Haven't called Thomas's name much with Relaford checking him. Running in to switch after switch. Now double teamed. Lenzel Smith comes in with a loose ball. Rebound to Withy. Tough outlet saved by Relaford. What a play. What an effort oh. play by Relaford. But also the, the instincts by Withy. The quickness on the, the catch and then to lead Relaford. And then you're right. He made a terrific touch there to oh. keep the ball alive. And then the presence to finish in the open floor. You talk about special. <laughs> Special K, that was pretty good. Yeah, that was real sweet. The long outlet pass right away. And then the instinctive play by Relaford to get himself all the way to the rim. Kraft thought that he was going to find Ravenel, but he was not here. Relaford walked that time. Trying to make the extra pass, but he walked in so doing. Well, we talked about Kansas at the top looking to get out in transition, but first, we're showing you Jeff Withy over the top. Ravenel trying to front. Beautiful pass from Kevin Young. And then Withy follows his own. And then look at Withy. Rebound, head up, outlet. And at the end of that, there was a layup for the Jayhawks. Each team with three turnovers. And the defensive intensity has a little something to do with that. I believe, too, this is a big-time game. Yeah. Right? Maybe a few nerves as well. Thomas. Not this time, guarded by Young, and they've done a very nice job on Deshaun here in the early going, this Kansas team. Thompson comes away with another turnover. Thompson for three. I tell you what, early on, Thompson setting the tone offensively for the Buckeye. He has all six of their points. Johnson, a little leaping leaner banker. Campbell's soup good there. <laughs> On a cold, crisp day here in central Ohio. Yeah, we'd like to thank you for the white Christmas, uh, Clark. The uh, <laughs> guy from West Palm in Louisiana really enjoying that. <laughs> yeah, a little brisk here in central Ohio, but winter has started <laughs> here in the Midwest. Find the hot man, and that's Thompson. This one grazes the front iron. It's pulled away by Relaford. Early on, but Ohio State really struggling to get any type of offensive continuity. Yeah. Credit Kansas. They really have taken this crowd out of the game in the half court. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that nice? Yeah. With the count it and the foul. Big time execution there. Penetration by Young, and then with the again. Riding his defender up the lane, and Young able to throw it over the top. Kansas off to a terrific start here in Columbus, and Jeff Withy has been in the middle of just about all of it. The Jayhawks by five. To them for the entire season because you still can't really prepare to have him on your roster. No dis, uh, no disagreement there. A nice win for Texas earlier in the week too against. Uh, North Carolina. They were playing Michigan State tough the last time I looked at the score of that game. That win by Temple today for Fran Dunphy's club was huge and uh, makes the Kansas game coming up at Fog Allen on January the 6th on CBS. A little more of a challenge, what do you think? As Thomas answers with a trade. And no coincidence that Shannon Scott's in the game, another ball, ball handling facilitator. Now all of a sudden you get a good look offensively for Thomas. They have gotten away with a walk there. And there's Shannon Scott who has a remarkable yeah. Three to one, <laughs> not assist the turnover ratio, Brad. Three to one steals the turnover ratio. You've been a point guard yes. at the highest level. Have you ever seen I've that? I've never kind of ratio? ever heard of that. And he has really improved markedly from a season ago for Thad Meyer. And when they're out there together, as you said, Greg, they can create havoc at both ends, he and Kraft. Defensively, they get hands on balls. They get up into players. Offensively, they can facilitate and help their teammates get good shots. Withy has six now of the Jayhawks' 13. 
Yeah, has more rebounds than the entire Ohio State team at this stage as well. Comes in averaging 14 points and eight boards a game. He does with him. There's Kevin Young with a nice clean board. And the Jayhawks will look to run. He is a glass eater. Johnson, nice wrap around. Willie Vine Young. Good ball reversal to McLemore. Textbook transition right there. That's the exact way if you're Kansas you want to attack you want paint touches force that defense to shrink to the level of the ball and then you get the looks on the perimeter on the weak side you know what guys when you lose a superstar you share the ball don't you it seems that way Bill Self was saying the exact same thing when we visited with him prior to the game they really have done a nice job sharing the basketball Shannon Scott Shannon. hits the kind iron and a steal by Scott I think he's uh, starting to put an imprint on this game. Oh, he's, got his, he's got his hands all over it in about two minutes. A little guard and craft every day in practice probably helps. He's fouled off the dribble penetration. And one of the advantages when you have four seniors, they play for one another, folks. They move the basketball. They make the extra pass. And it's funny how often you make jump shots when you pass the ball in rhythm. Shannon Scott coming in off the bench, doing a nice job right at you, folks, off the bounce. And he has been tremendous in his impact on games coming off the oh, bench. Yeah! Son of Charlie Scott, the first African-American player at North Carolina, Odin Smith, and the uh, rest of the family is on hand. What a, what a wonderful guy he is. I had a chance to visit with him when, when I was in here for the Wisconsin game last year. But the emergence of Shannon, I think it's all about confidence now. Yeah, you're right, Tim. It's such a fine line between being comfortable and being adequately confident and, and the other thing that's important about that is I think it takes a lot of pressure off of Aaron Crabb I felt in the final four game last year he got worn down against Kansas and I thought you saw a little bit of that even against him earlier in the season he allows him to play in rhythm and not overextend himself back Lamar again boy this kid is good he's really good he's special he's got tremendous elevation excellent poise and a honey sweet stroke and when you combine those things with his size and athleticism, people aren't going to be able to bother his shot. Yeah, Clark, we call that a wetter. <laughs> He's got a wetter from the perimeter. So too does he, but that's off to the left with Clinton Ross. Q, as they call him, couldn't get that one to go. And Amir Williams came down with the rebound, but they're unable to get it converted. Timeout. Over eight minutes gone here in Columbus. It is as fast as advertised. Due in large measure to that, and he's going to get a brief blow on the sidelines. Ellis is coming to the game, joining up with Relaford. A relatively small lineup now in with Nadir Clark, the sophomore from Worcester Mass in the game, in the backcourt. More of a prolific point, and there's an example of why. He didn't catch it cleanly, though. Yep, he walks. Yep, trailer. It was a beautiful pass. It sure was. Unable to catch it cleanly, and... I'm not sure if he actually walked there. It may have been a fumble, That's a little a bit of a point. fumble. I'm not sure if, if he, it looked like a walk more than it might have actually been one. And, folks, if you don't have possession of the basketball, you cannot walk with it. There you go. But maybe a bad angle by the official on that play. Craft the pull up. Williams the follow, not there. Bothered by Ellis, who rips down the rebound and quickly gets it into the hands of Nadir Thar. That's a case where Williams did a nice job on the offensive glass, but you don't need to rush just to get it back up on the rim. Take your time and get a quality shot in there. Trailer can't get that one to fall, and Shannon Sharp looks to blow by. Shannon Scott. Shannon Scott, I beg your pardon. <laughs> just a moment with an NFL promo, I think. Right? <laughs> Monday, it's Christmas Eve, and two broke girls are unwrapping their special brand of holiday cheer. Celebrate the holiday with two broke girls Monday, only CBS. We've got to work some NFL promos into this <laughs> That's show. right. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody better than you. The segue right into it smoothly. Here's Scott. <laughs> Williams there to follow, and he's fouled. One thing I'm noticing here, guys, the officials are allowing the physicality to dictate the style of the game. And I, I do think that benefits Kansas, even though Ohio State's a Big Ten team mm -hmm. and they're known for being physical. But because of the overall depth and then you factor in the experience of Kansas, 
I think that benefits the road team. First foul on Rutherford with Amir Williams, highly thought of big man from Birmingham, Michigan, Detroit's Country Day at the free throw line. Bill Self is really one of the best at making sure his best guns have energy at the end of games. He'll freely substitute early. In traffic, not there for Johnson. Trailer to put back. And even though Johnson doesn't score, it's the penetration that forces help that creates angles to attack on the offensive glass for the Jayhawks. As I've watched both of these teams to this point, the game against Michigan State, Kansas was in control of that game, but couldn't control the dribble late. The same has happened with Ohio State, and that's going to be something to keep an eye on both ways, which one of these teams can minimize dribble penetration. Scott finds Kraft. A nice, a nice look by Shannon Scott. Yeah, let's see if that gets Kraft going there. A nice shot in rhythm. Struggled with his shooting. He may be counted on today offensively. From downtown with an answer. 23 to 17. Park, I got to tell you, I love the purpose that Kansas plays with. Yeah. Even now when they bring in their younger players, they still play the way the seniors do. And well that's, said. A, that's a critical element to have if you want to go far come tournament time. Well, we talked about penetration just a moment ago. Scott here, going to get in here and then kick it right out to Kraft for a triple. Penetration. Kraft makes himself available. All wet. He has struggled from the three-point line. And I think part of it is Aaron is working on adjusting some shot mechanics. He's done that through the summer, but continuing to work on that during the season. And it just takes a while before you fully trust it. You and I both love to play golf. And all three of us enjoy playing golf. Anytime you start tinkering with your swing, it becomes a matter of when can you get comfortable with it when you actually have to get off of the driving range. But what I do like about what Aaron Kraft's done this season is the fact that he doesn't allow his jump shot to dictate his performance in terms of making sure his team functions offensively the way they need to to win basketball games. That's, what, that's his wheelhouse, really. That's what he likes to do most is lead and defend and set up other people. Causing a little havoc here, don't you think? <laughs> Johnson off the feed from Tharp. Rutherford going after every loose opportunity, as is McLemore. Those two play so hard. McLemore on the floor now. Scott again. Great play by Scott, but how about Amir Williams doing a great job of not allowing Withy to get over for the block. That's where you have to trust that your bigs understand. Those are the plays they don't show up in the stat sheet part, but that tells you Amir Williams is starting to figure it out That's right. as, a, seeing, as a front line player. Seeing the game, we call it. Don't watch the game, see it and react. Buckeyes have closed to it in two. That was a really difficult pass for Young to make. We'll be unable to corral it. It will be Ohio State's ball. And this is a read here by Shannon Scott. You see that pin there? by Amir Williams, he does a smart thing. He, then he grabs with he just a love, you know, a little subtle grab there to not allow him to extend to go for that block shot. Understanding who you're playing about against, that's what we call KYP. You got to know your personnel when you're out on the floor. Thomas, we're trying to get him through. And that is the vintage Deshaun Thomas jumper right there. And the Buckeyes with their first lead, 24 to 23. All in one room with Jim Nance. You'll be able to see it next week. A spectacular show. Make sure you make an appointment viewing next Saturday. Well, you see the run, 10-3, in the last two minutes. Now, what this backcourt of Scott and Kraft have done is they've sped the game up. Yes, Kansas wants to play fast in transition, but not in the half court. And when you can pressure and disrupt offensively, you're forcing Kansas to now try to attack off the dribble as opposed to allowing their offense to create offense. Williams got caught hooking inside. I'll tell you what, I love the pace. 
that this game is being played at. The officials are doing an outstanding job allowing plenty of incidental physical contact as long as it doesn't impact speed, rhythm, and balance. Another turnover, and here's Thompson. That's a great look. Scott! Oh! Great Scott! Not Stan! <laughs> great Scott! How did he do that? <laughs> well, when you get out in the open court, when you get a quality look early, typically the board is available if the shot doesn't go down because the defenders are scrambling. Nine turnovers by the Jayhawks. Time out, Kansas. Listen to this crowd. And he did it without fouling. And then Thompson able on the next possession to get all the way to the rim, forcing the Jayhawks to call a timeout. And you know what's interesting? 8-0 early in this game, points in the paint by Kansas. They were dominating. Lately, though, it's 8-4 now for Ohio State as they've gotten themselves back into the game. An 11 nothing run for the Blue guys, and they've done it with turnovers. Four in a row. Return to Cinder by McLemore as he knocks it away. 7.30 remaining. Don't blink. It's too good to miss. And those are getting those runouts that you talked about for OSU exactly. that have allowed them to seize control. In only seven minutes, Shannon Scott with seven points, three dishes, and he's made a big difference for Kraft as well. Thomas can't get that one to fall. Withy collects another rebound for the Jayhawks. And I also might mention Kansas has missed a couple of makeable shots during this impressive run by Ohio State. Let's see what they get here as they settle down in the half court. I think Withy's got to get a touch. As the game speeds up, you become small. And that means Withy does not have as much of an impact. You want to play five on five if you're Kansas. Starters are back on the floor for Bill Sutton. McLemore can't get that one to go. Kraft comes down with it. Thomas likes the speed advantage here, but Withy, of course, can answer and he forces the turnover. Folks, I don't know if you appreciate what you just saw with Jeff Withy. The lateral quickness yeah. he showed and containment on Deshaun Thomas. This is not easy for a guy 7-2. And you notice how he keeps his feet and he goes with the verticality. That's why he forces that turnover by Thomas. Clark, you are a big man. Is that the volleyball in him? You know, he played in San Diego until his junior year of high school. I'm sure you can attribute a lot of that poise and discipline to volleyball and the quickness of his second jumps is something that he also picked up being a volleyball player. McLemore, the winner, not there. Rapp has Scott on one side, Thompson on the other, but he holds it and sets up shot. He finds Scott. Oh, oh, the base is open late Saturday afternoon in Columbus. It is a 14 to nothing Buckeyes run. This is where Kansas needs to go. Nicely done. Well done. Oh, by Young, and he's fouled to boot. Williams coming over late, along with Kraft. Count the basket. Amir Williams, the foul. Penetration by Kraft, and then Scott, fortunate that he sprays that one in off the glass, but the penetration is what creates the wide-open look for Shannon Scott. And then last possession here was terrific ball movement, inside-out action, back in, and then Young able to finish. We haven't seen that in about seven or eight minutes for Kansas. They've gotten out of character, but credit Scott and Kraft with their pressure on the penetration out on the perimeter for Ohio State. Kevin Young really knows his role. He's a strong, senior, complimentary player. Clark trying to knock that one away. Out of bounds over these two. Nadir Tharp applying some of the pressure that Scott and Kraft have applied to the Kansas backcourt, forcing the turnover there. Lenzel Smith comes back into the game after the turnover. And Kraft going to get a rest. It won't be a long one. Actually, he looks a little sore. Actually, Aaron Kraft is shaking up. Well, he, either that or very tired. Yeah, I think he took one of the chops. Elijah Johnson had some knee in. Injury problems, but his thought through it. Relaford saves it for Young. And count. now that'll be a foul against Thompson. And I think Kansas fortunate on that play there. 
Young on the penetration, and it looked like position was established, Clark. But no, you know what? Him. Give him credit because he, he went away from yeah, the exactly. charge. And That's when right. you try to avoid it, I thought that was the right call. And yeah. I thought Thompson was sliding a little bit as well. And congratulations to David Letterman, recipient of this year's Kennedy Center honor. This week, Dave's got Scarlett Johansson, Led Zeppelin, Matt Damon, and Bill Murray. Only CDS. And the second for Young is converted. 31 to 27, four point lead and a highly entertaining first half in Columbus, Ohio. Ravenel rushed that shot just a bit on the baseline. The alley oop for Young from Johnson and a foul underneath. Shannon Scott's going to pick it up. Turnover's a big story. It's been the key, really, for Ohio State. They've done the job with their pressure on the perimeter. Getting those turnovers, allowing them to get out in transition. They have struggled at times with scoring a half court. Not an issue for them when they can get out and run in the open court. Well, you touched on it at the top of the telecast. Transition opportunities primarily for Kansas, but both of these teams are similar. And how they run and win. Ohio State doesn't have the consistent inside presence, so they may not play inside out as much as by throwing it into the post, but they want to, both of these teams want to be able to operate in transition. Yeah, you have to have paint impact, and there's three ways you can do it. You can do it by post, you can do it by penetration, and then via the pass mm -hmm. out of your offense, and Ohio State understands that they've done a good job of that here in the first half. Johnson stays with it after the offensive rebound off the missed free throws by Witte. The Jayhawks convert and cut it down to two. A 6 nothing answer by Kansas. As you might expect from an experienced team with championship pedigree. Scott, while taking it to the rack, is fouled by the Jayhawks. And a couple other things, Ohio State in the half court, you can see the adjustments that Mata is making. He's trying to get Withy out of the paint. Uh -huh. So you do that by incorporating him in pick and rolls. Even though you're not looking for the roll, man, it forces Withy to have to extend on the help, and that gives you attack angles at the rim. The, the foul was against Star his first. Tuesday on CBS, it's the law versus the mob in the city. That's part battleground and part playground. The new hit drama, Vegas, Tuesday, only CBS. Aaron Kraft uh, looking to come back into the game, waiting at the uh, scores table. But he'll have to wait a little longer after those misses. McClinton Ross is there with him, number 10, also waiting to check in on the next day ball. Both teams strengths defense, and we've seen that illustrated in the number of turnovers. Some of them because of just great defense, and I think others because they're rushing a little bit. Agreed. Part of what you want to do by getting up into the ball is to speed up the opponent, to get them uncomfortable, to get them out of rhythm and out of a comfort zone. And keep in mind, these are two teams their best strength is their offense. That's where they create offense. When you pressure and extend, you force more one-on-one -on -one play, which neither team really excels at. They are not built that way. Mm -hmm. Look how wide open that lane is for Ohio State. Another ball screen here, trying to get with the involved, and then Kraft open on the backside. Well executed by Ohio State. That's a foul on Ross. Ross, for yep. sure. Over the top. With 3.51 remaining, a two-point game. Bill Self trying to get his guys to settle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. They went to the archives to grab that. Yes, they did. Those photos out of there. Yes, they did. And we've since gone to no maintenance, low maintenance yes. on the hairstyles. <laughs> you and I. Which I prefer. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Right now, we've got a battle of points off turnovers versus points in the paint. And Relaford taking it into the painted area draws the contact from Ravenel. Kansas winning points in the paint 16 to 8. And the Buckeyes enjoying a pretty healthy advantage in points off turnovers 12 to 3. 
and, and that's been the formula for the Buckeyes all year. They, they're one of the best in the country at taking care of it and turning you over. Mm -hmm. Kansas has really helped them today with their inability to execute in the half court. Well, the Buckeyes plus five turnover margin per game, to your point, Greg. Look at stats all over the course of the early part of the season, Clark. And for me, I, I tend not to look at them because I think they're skewed. Mm -hmm. You're not necessarily in a type of competition you're going to face in conference and obviously in the tournament. But when you get these kinds of matchups, I think these are the barometer games that give you a real feel for who you are as a team and what you need to be able to compete at the highest level. Well, since that shock treatment timeout by Bill Self, Jayhawks have been on a 7 nothing run. And what you witnessed there in Relaford missing a free throw is rare. 93% Big 12 leader in free throw shooting percentage. Thompson, not there. Young comes down with it. Off the tap out by Withy. Little two-man game between Relaford and Withy. They want to get that ball swung to the opposite side and then go over the top. Relaford on the wing. Lenzel Smith Jr. with the save, out to Aaron Crabb. I don't think the shot clock's ever come into play, has it? <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. I said it would be on roller yeah. blades. I just thought I'd point that out as we're coming down uh, to the closing moments of the half. I love the pace. It allows for more playmaking and shot making. But Quentin Ross. Again, affected by the mere presence of Jeff Withy. And we talk about the non-conference games that the Jayhawks play, that Michigan State game at a neutral site, really. Oregon State, Colorado. That Temple game, which will be on CBS, that's a Sunday tilt, just became a lot bigger based on what Fran Dunphy's team did today, beating Syracuse. Yeah, I took a quick gander at that box score, and Khalif Wyatt oh, went was, for 33. Uh, he was unstoppable today. He really was. What a competitor he is. Johnson. Nice pull up off the glass. Float. Float on. Right there. <laughs> and, and what you're seeing now, the game's starting to slow down again. I remember Kansas. I remember a lyric from that song. I think it was uh, Cancer. Yeah. My name is Larry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I like that, yeah. Timmy thing. <laughs> you, can't, you can't leave anything out there with the toe tapper. <laughs> Ravenel. <laughs> There have not been many offensive rebound opportunities for the Buckeyes. But do they take advantage of that one? Wow. McLemore in traffic. <laughs> Staying with it with the help of Young, but Deshaun Thomas clears. He's crafty. There's Scott. Off the back iron, pulled down by Johnson. That was a dangerous pass, and Ravenel oh, rejected by Withy. They're going to call foul him. on the other side, maybe with Johnson reaching in. I think you're right, Tim. Oh, man, oh, oh. major action here both ways. <laughs> Lindell Smith Jr. <laughs> and how about the fine? <laughs> and then you could never <laughs> get anything easy oh. with the eraser. On the interior, Jeff Withy. I don't remember a block any better than that than Walton against Larry Keenan in 73. You're going way back. I mean, I really. Wow. That was just an amazing defensive play. It's terrific because he never gave up on the play. That was a transition opportunity. And he got himself back into the play. And they won't give up two. Well, the level of discipline that Withy has defensively is off it's the remarkable. Chart. It's it's off remarkable, the chart. Tim. It really is. I mean, you watch him. He moves so well. His timing is impeccable. And, Greg, you made a good point. The fact that typically Kansas on the perimeter is pretty good mm -hmm. means he's not defending guys that have blown by their man. So he's had a chance to kind of see it unfold and then position himself for the shot change or the block. There you go. It's the ability to eliminate blow-bys that keep bigs out of foul trouble. And with the reads, block shots like a point guard reads the floor. 
when he delivers the dime. Farp negotiates to McLemore. That's a good find because Ellis Johnson was forced to sit after picking up the second foul. Farp has played well since coming in for him. Yeah, he's been solid all season. Actually, the last few games in particular, Farp has really started to step up his game. Had a career-high 11, 11 points in the win against Richmond. Shot clock differential, you can see, about four and a half seconds. Grab, tough pass. Deflected away by Young. Out the oh, 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 oh. How about the dime? Oh, but then McLemore in stride catches it, and he just has another gear. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. Has some big ones. Could I, uh, <laughs> could I say the spirit of St. Louis is doing just fine in Kansas? I Christian would agree. Life, yeah, from, I would certainly agree, partner. By way of Christian Life Center in the state of Texas, the redshirt freshman Ben McLemore. You know, it's very rare you see a team of the stature of Kansas with this many seniors, fellas, but they have them, and I think McLemore blending with them the way he has is incredible. It really is. I mean, he was a partial qualifier last year academically so he was not able to even practice until the second semester but I had a chance to watch him practice during that time and you could see he had a special package when it comes to basketball ability and he's got unlimited potential and already having a terrific start to this first season of playing for Kraft working on Rio Adams we've got a foul prior to the shot and the uh clock was still running after the foul took place. Rio, the freshman from Seattle, Washington. And you will see that the uh, clock continued to run after the foul took place. There's a bump. There. Yeah, there should be about three more, probably more close, closer to five seconds on the clock. But nobody making note of it. So. Oh, we have the uh, early season adjustment to uh, clock. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know what time our production team is trying to make a flight. You know, but going back quickly to that, that point about McLemore, what did Bill Self tell us before? He said he's the best freshman he's ever had since he's been there. And that's high praise for this young man when you think about all the talent that's come through for Bill Self. Perhaps with just one of the two. He was fouled. Or he walked. He walked. Prior Tell you what, that extra two points, two did. seconds would have made a difference yep. had yep. it been on the clock. We're going to wait for the whistle here. The whistle did come right about the time the uh, clock hit double zero. So we are at the break. An exciting first 20 minutes. McLemore with 13 points, three for five from downtown. A two-point get 14 nothing spurt at right at the ship. That's a great point, Tim. The fact that it was the Kansas starters that really stabilized things, and it was the Buckeyes bench, primarily Shannon Scott, that injected some real life into this Ohio State group. Aaron Kraft feeds Lindsay Smith Jr. That one grazed the front iron. There's Thomas picking up a little garbage. Elijah Johnson doing what Bill Self wants him to do. Now Relaford with a quick turnover and it goes the other way. But what they want from Elijah Johnson is penetration. Take it to the rack. You want it, but you don't want it on that in that way. Because if you go direct line penetration without moving the defense, you're allowing five sets of eyes to focus on you. And then they can eliminate the angles to create passing opportunities. He's got to move the ball through the, def the offense first and then attack. And Kraft apparently, while driving, stepped on the inline. The exact same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Because that's really, Clark, and you know this, when you're a, a dominant defensive team, your objective is to not allow a team to run their offense. Right. So in essence, you're feeding right into what they want by trying to attack without moving the feet and the eyes of the defense. Well, they were setting up a beautiful alley-oop. But a pick that was illegal, and uh, Bill Self's a little beside himself over that one. So a block goes the other way. Foul committed by Kevin Young, his second. And turnovers are never good. Yep. Turnovers are never good, but dead ball turnovers give you a chance to set your defense if you're Kansas, particularly when you're on the road. Pretty clear Bill knew that was a good call as he pointed out. You just cost us two, Mr. Young.
Thompson had a very good first eight minutes of the game and was not hurt from as much. Grass looking to deal to him right now. The iron unkind, but it's pulled down by Kraft. Those are the shots I think Ohio State has to make with greater regularity here in the second half if they're going to hold on and get a win here. Denzel Smith Jr. again off the front iron. Kraft runs down the loose ball again, and the contact from Johnson. And, and early on, the quickness of Ohio State here in this second half to get to those loose balls that's really allowing them to stay in control from a momentum standpoint. That's a big foul because it's number three on Johnson. Remember, he got his second in the closing moments of the first half. But the good news is that Deere Tharp did play well in the first 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Three points, a couple of assists, and eight minutes for Tharp in that first half. But you're right, Tim. It's a big foul on Johnson. Thomas plays the nylon song. His jump shot is just so smooth and fluid. Gets and quick. Crowd, and gets the crowd back into the game. Mm -hmm. He doesn't take much time to get it loaded and launched. Young. Then Kraft knocking it away. No reset of the shot clock, though. Oh, they did reset it because I was of possession. Say, I You're right. He had yeah, possession. They did have possession. That's exactly right. Matter of fact, reset of the shot clock. I would like to not see that be a rule. Yeah. In that situation there, that was just an extension of a good defensive play. Yeah, keep the keep the game flow right, where it ought right. to be. And it's I not just that. that you keep it flowing, you don't punish the defense. Right, that's my that's point. That's the whole, that's, that's why my I, point. another, and since we're going there, I don't like the jump ball alternate possession rule. I'm not a fan of that either. Right? Yeah. Because, again, you're punishing the defense oftentimes for making a great play. Mm -hmm. Why can't I get the rules committee to get you guys on? <laughs> <laughs> I try every year, I do. <laughs> Having said that, though, I, I think Clark and I both agree the game is great. College oh, yeah. basketball right now. And it, this is really epitomizes what's great about a game. This game right here. Rivers jump hook, not there. Thomas the rebound. I like what Ohio State did there, guys. They played behind with him as opposed to trying to front him. Make him shoot over the top some this time. Thomas made the extra pass, but Linzel Smith Jr., a sharpshooter, unable to get it to go from the perimeter so far today. Far. As an example of what we were talking about with this youngster, a mighty might who's played big. Change of pace really gives them a different dynamic than they get with Elijah Johnson. Remember, Elijah Johnson's transitioning from that shooting guard to the point guard position. One of the, I think, the most difficult transition to make for a basketball player. Without question, beautiful attack by Tharp in the open oh. at that time. Loose ball, run down by Young. When you think of Bill Self teams at Kansas and even at Tulsa and Illinois, he's been a combo guard guy, not a prolific pure point. Tharp is that. It's rare to see a 5'11 real point on oh, this team and Young on the alley-oop to Withy. That's one thing I love about Patrick Young. He understands who he is on the basketball floor. And oftentimes, when you're not overly aggressive, you minimize your turnovers. You give your team an opportunity to make productive plays. Those were Withy's first points in 17 and a half minutes of action. He's done a lot of other things, though. Ravenel. Oh. it right to the big guy, but unable to convert. Kraft reaches in that time, gets a little body, and the foul will go against Aaron. We, we call this having that extra gear. Look at Tharp as he turns it on him. What he's doing, he's reading the defense. He sees that angle to attack before he gets to it. And then the nice decision by Young on the Withy slam. That's another way to incorporate Withy. He's not a terrific back-to-the-basket poke stuff player, but he is an excellent finisher at the rim. And when this thing bogs down and becomes more of a half-court game, I think Kansas has more ways to hurt you than Ohio State does, especially if Ohio State is not able to knock down the good open perimeter shots that they get. Kansas has more drivers and finishers, and then they've got Withy, who can finish even though he doesn't have a real true back-to-the-basket game. Relaford's bucket extends the 6-0 run for Kansas. Grab feeds Thompson. And the perimeter jumper not falling for Sam now. Relaford again to Mclemore. A little too much, little too much oomph on that one. Timeout. Kansas leads.
So we were in the uh, locker room before the game, and I, I had to give my Eddie Sutton walk and time out impression. <laughs> he got a kick out of that. Yes, he did. We So, too, did we. Yeah, we all love Eddie. Uh, Coach Sutton, uh, so impactful in Bill Self's career. Really, probably the, uh, the other guy that had the most impact on Bill would be Larry Brown. Exactly. Yeah. I would throw Leonard Hamilton in there as well. Not quite five minutes gone. As Thomas on the help is fouled by Withies. Gee, that's only my 13th foul this season. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remarkable, and we've highlighted why that's the case. His timing is impeccable. Obviously, he's seven feet tall with a, an extended reach and got an awful lot of the pumpkin there, but came into the wrist as well. Let's take a look at the blog on Deshaun Thomas. Well, he leads his team in scoring and rebounding. Thirsty on O. That's what the young <laughs> folks would say. He's thirsty. Wants those shots to get up. Buckets wherever. Offensive rebounds. And he's a bit streaky from three. But he can find ways to put it in the basket from anywhere and any angle on the court. I'm really glad to see you've updated in social networking. It used to be the book. <laughs> now it's the blog. I see. I see. Change is inevitable. We're just trying to keep up with it. They are allowing it to be physical on the interior. Just as you say that, a foul against wow. Lamar Williams. And the crowd goes wild. Wow. Uh, the, really, the foul was committed a little bit earlier in that possession. No, it was. You right. allowed them to play through it. Substitution for Ohio State number 30. But I like the fact that Amir is battling. Yeah, that's his and, third uh, foul, yeah, by I the mean, way. You, you might call a foul there. You think? You know, it's possible. <laughs> but you know what? It, they went back to trying to front again, though, Park. Which yeah. I agree. I think that's a mistake. Relaford, beautifully done. And that's not easy because out of a scouting report, you know Aaron Kraft was ready. He just had a quick step on Aaron and got to the 10. 8-1-1 now for Kansas. And they're doing it all points in the paint, guys. That's where it's happening for Kansas. They are scoring easier than Ohio State is able to. Baseline out of bounds play here, and Aaron Kraft just gets beat. I don't know if that was his responsibility or a team breakdown, but... I they don't want to give up beat. baskets on the baseline. I think he just got a bounce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, he did, but you, you still have to have an awareness right. on a baseline out of bounds from a help standpoint. Exactly. And another point, keep in mind, Kansas has not turned the ball over much here in the second half. They have not allowed Ohio State to have some easy runouts. That's where they got their rhythm offensively in that first half. It's been non-existent here thus far. Well, when you squeeze the orange, partner, you get fresh orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Macklemore can't get that one to go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to work on that. The squeezing process with you guys. <laughs> Off the back iron, loose ball, run down by Deshaun. Oh, right. That was an offensive foul. Yeah, it was an offensive foul, but they did not make that call. I thought that was a wipe away by Thomas with the right hand. And they were, the special was pretty emphatic on that call. You, you gave him the Heisman here. <laughs> yeah, take let's a look take at this. Good effort to get to the loose ball. Yeah, there's the Heisman. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that should have gone the other way, I think. <laughs> Thomas with all six of Ohio State points this half. Monday on CBS. It may be cold outside, but there's one place that's always oh so hot. Hawaii 5 0, Monday, only CBS. You know, we talked earlier about Bill Self and the job he does with his team. He, he's In college, he's one of the best coaches at, at really using the regular season to prepare for the tournament. Mm. And by that, I mean he plays his younger players in the heat of the moment. He allows them to develop not only confidence, but the trust of their teammates. Mm. So when those moments present themselves, Elijah Johnson picks up three or Jeff Whitney gets in foul trouble down the line, those guys will have the confidence to come in and make plays and to kind of keep that motor running. Excellent point. Thomas has 16 now for the Buckeyes. Here's Ellis in traffic trying to find Young, ill-advised pass. Is that the first Jayhawks turnover this time? Yes. And there's a foul spotted as Relaford comes over to help on Ravenel. I really think, guys, the more Ohio State can rev up the pace and quick hit and attack 
without necessarily having to run a lot of half-court offense. I think it bodes better for them because they're athletic and they operate a little better, I think, in the open court. Yeah, and you know what? We haven't heard as much from Shannon Scott in the second half as we did the first. Your favorite superstar performers on our acting legend Dustin Hoffman, king of late night David Letterman, and one of the greatest rock bands of all time, Led Zeppelin. The Kennedy Center honors Wednesday only CBS. The young man that's lost about uh, 60 pounds since his career began. And Dave Richardson, the uh, strength coach here, has done a marvelous job with him. What a scene in Columbus. We're tied at 45. Mark Tucson on a foul inside. And Bill Self doing a little bit of what the Abada's done now. You know, you got Tharp and, and Johnson in at the same time to deal with the pressure as the intensity picks up here. And nice decision by the young fella hitting Young in stride and a good call by the officials. Again, you can attack the paint via the pass, the post, or with penetration. And that's what Tharp's able to do on that possession. You know what, fellas? Last year, Clark, you were there for it in the Final Four. Foul trouble late impacted Ohio State. And they did not have the legs to hang with Kansas. That's the third foul on Kraft. Yeah. Excellent point, Timmy. It was Deshaun Thomas last year in that semifinal matchup. Ravenel with a rejection. Believe it or not, though, I take it a step further. I think you're right about the foul trouble, but I also felt fatigue played a role down the stretch in that game. So this could be a blessing in disguise for Ohio State in some respects because Kraft gets a, a blow he wouldn't ordinarily get, and so now maybe he can finish stronger down the stretch. You're, you're right. Thad's instincts are to keep Aaron Kraft in the mm -hmm. game. And, and I don't blame him. <laughs> he was playing for me. You're right. He might play 42 minutes of a 40-minute game. Johnson ooping from McLemore. He lost the handle. Followed. Count it. And he'll get to the line. That's two major exactly. breakdowns, though. You can't afford no. to have that happen against a high-level opponent where they're getting two buckets, maybe five points, on breakdowns defensively on baseline out-of-bounds plays. You may have to make an adjustment if you're Thad Mata. His group right now not recognizing the plays. And it's, it's not like they haven't prepared That's right. it for this game in terms of that's two times in a row. They could end up with five points on baseline out of bounds. You'd be happy to get two over the course of a game. Those are McLemore's first points of this half. And yet Kansas now leads by four. Ohio State's missed their last six shots from the floor. Smith trying to get on track and struggling. Staying with it though with the hustle play. Ravenel out to Thompson. Got on a blow by and he's fouled. Got a little chippy and that'll be intentional against Thark. He wrapped him up. That'll be a flagrant one. Yep. Oh, clearly, no play on the ball, just a dosey -si do be my partner. Yeah, I mean, That's basically what Thark was doing there. And it's you got the right issue with call. that? Well, it's the right call based on the rules, but I, I don't think that those are the types of plays that we should be utilizing for flagrants. I mean, it, the play is below the net. It's not a situation where he's trying to do anything with malice. That's a tough call. Foul, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Flagrant, that's a, another step. So Nadir Tharp now has three. Elijah Johnson has three. So a dilemma in the backcourt to some extent now for Bill Self. And Johnson and Tharp remain on the floor. Here's where Shannon Scott playing for Aaron Kraft can really show his ever-improving game. Thomas can't get this one to go. Ellis with the rebound for Kansas. Very highly thought of freshman from Wichita. Most heralded since Wayne Simeon in the state of Kansas to come to Lawrence. 
Now this is the type of defense you saw from Ohio State when they made the run actually in the first half. They were able to extend and force Kansas to have to play more one-on-one. -on -one. Scott pulls up. Short, but there's Thompson. And he's fouled by Whitting. And again. CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue. Taking place behind the scenes as you look at the uh, foul difficulty now. Three for Kansas and Kraft and Williams for Ohio State. And memories of that, uh, so huge. They say it's tougher to get to the Final Four than to win it. And I think that game illustrated it, Clark. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, that was just a fabulously executed yes. play. And then Leitner obviously making a big shot, but he got a quality look, was, which is what he was hoping to get there. And yeah. actually, I'm looking forward to hearing so much about what everybody else says in yeah. regards to favorite moments, behind the mic stories, and mm -hmm. the like. And then the philosophies, because that's the thing about this great game. You can win in yeah. so many different ways, and that coaching carousel that we got the opportunity to see with that show illustrates that. Nice job here, Ravenel, holding with him. The hop from behind. There's that Ohio State defense again. And a timeout taken by Kansas off the loose ball situation. And if Kansas is able to hold on with this game, how about these two possessions here off a of baseline out of bounds? Complete breakdowns defensively by the Buckeyes. Let's hope dare you come into the state of Ohio and right. give an unabashed They Pittsburgh, do play the Bengals give, give tomorrow now. An unabashed Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, he was rocking that oh. Pittsburgh Steelers <laughs> sky piece yesterday. <laughs> that skull sky piece he had on all black and gold uh, yes. in here. I'm sure Nance and Sims loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, in this one right in front of us, it's going to come down to shot making and free throw making. And Kansas to meet in a half court setting has more playmakers mm -hmm. and shot makers so far McLemore has been pretty good from the perimeter Johnson can go get his own off the dribble as he just showed you there with is capable Rutherford can slash and drive to go for Ohio State they've got to continue to force turnovers and be able to quick hit in attacking and then knock down some free throws as both teams will be shooting bonus free throws the rest of the way and if, you, if you're Ohio State keep an eye on the fact that you got to be somewhat impressed with they haven't really gotten anything from Lindsay Smith tonight yeah. you know they've been able to nullify him yeah. as has Kansas and yet you're still in a one possession game yeah that's exactly right Greg Lindsay Smith jr. just sat down and there's with the that time Ravenel played behind him but he was too deep yes you want to ride him off the lane a little bit then play behind him as opposed to having him go up to the middle of the lane and front it. That was a nice look by Trailer. By the way, Kraft is back on the floor playing with three fouls. And uh, Wenzel Smith sitting down after the foul was committed. And you look at that 0-4 from the floor in the last 7.45. They've stayed in this game by getting to the free throw line. Mm -hmm. And uh, Thompson's now out there with Shannon Scott. And Kraft, 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 Kraft. Another rejection. Goodness. How about that? Help defense. How about that help? Take a look at Withy here, doing a nice job getting position, holding that position well, and then the nice post feed. And Withy doesn't waste any time, goes right to the right angle and finishes it inside. Ohio State over their last 10 from the floor. But when you get post position that deep, that's equivalent of a blow by. Hey. Help cannot get there. Three top of defense. Thompson should have taken that wing. Jump. Exactly, Tim. That was a wide open shot. I mean, why challenge Withy? On the baseline like that. Yep, well, that's like being at the shopping mall during the holidays trying to find that real close space yeah, yeah. instead of just parking way away and walk to the store. Yeah, but Take the, what's available when it's available. The problem, though, is Thompson just got his driver's license. And so it's a, he's not as comfortable at this stage of his career with okay. making those plays. We've been waiting for Scott and Kraft to get it going. And they have not been able to do it here in the second half. Well, and keep in mind, too, Ohio State's offense comes from their offense, meaning they have to execute to create scoring opportunities. They're not going to beat you individually. Really, only Deshaun Thomas has that ability, and one guy is not going to do it against this Kansas defense. Uh, it's amazing, 0 for 11, the last 11 shots, but they're only down by five. Yeah, that's exactly the point Greg made a moment ago, Tim, and it's a good one because it's still... 
still the opportunity, but you've got to knock down yeah. some shots. That's a good open shot and one you've got to take. But you need some makes at some point. Yeah. But it, it, this time of the game, though, is where Ohio State in big games has gotten a little heavy legged. Now, Scott knocks it away, but that's something that you noticed from the end of last year into the game with Duke that they lost earlier this year. Yeah, but I will give that by a lot of credit. They're, they're playing more of their bench in this game. And I will also say this. This is a mental game right now because while they're only down two possessions and there's nine minutes to go, it feels like they're down more. Mm -hmm. They can't allow it to feel that way. Really wants it. Johnson. Yeah, they've got to be they've got to be aware of how close they are to that sideline. Court awareness. Yep. That's what that is, and a turnover. The end result. That's the 16th by Kansas, and it's really enabled the Buckeyes to hang around. Mm -hmm. And they're 0 for their last 12 from the floor as Withy sits down. Young back into the game now to dog Shannon Scott. Kansas with McLemore. Young. Elijah Johnson. Relaford. <laughs> And Jamari Trailer, the five on the floor. Multiple defenders, multiple defenders have taken a chance, taking their turns with that's on Thomas. That's a high percentage shot off the feet inside to Amir Williams. And that's a big basket too, because when a, when a young player sees the ball go through the basket, it makes him a better basketball player. Relevant answers oh, with a tray. Oh, 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 the senior. Coming through big because they have gotten a little stagnant here offensively, Clark. Really not having a lot of productivity in the half court. You would think, Clark, they'd go inside with Withy on the bench. That would be the suggestion, but it's about knocking down the open perimeter shot. Well, the only bucket they have in the last 10 minutes and 30 seconds was for Maria Williams. Off a nice pass from Thomas. It's the first time the shot clock is drifted into single digits. The floater, too strong. Williams, again, point blank range. And, and you're talking about going inside. They can go inside, but they got to do it with penetration. They don't really have, other than Thomas, anybody who has that ability to score with their back to the basket. So the other way to do it is attack off the dribble and force help and maybe get to the offensive glass. McLemore not there. Young the offensive board. Back to McLemore and a foul spotted inside. Amir Williams has a chance to grow up with shots in this game for their team. So that tells you they haven't been able to get the offense they want as opposed to Kansas controlling tempo with their shot distribution. Well, we're going to take a look at what Scott and Kraft have done first half Second half comparison, 14 points, 5 of 9 in the first half, 2 points, 0 of 5 here in the second half. That's as big a story as any to re to support the inability of Ohio State to knock down perimeter shots. The point you make is an excellent one, Greg, in terms of that shot distribution, but some of that is attributable to the defense that Kansas is playing on those two primary scores for Ohio State. Lindell Smith Jr. on the bench now and not out there on the court because he's got, and he's only one of eight. Looking to see what his foul total is. Not many. He's only, yeah, he's got, only got one. one. Yeah, so it's not that. There's Kevin Kraft, but it's not there. And Thomas trying to keep it alive, but with the just too tall, and he brings down his ninth rebound. Part of, I think, why Lindsell Smith's on the bench is because he's one for eight. Right, he I was going to make that same point. Yeah, to exactly. get into any type of a flow offensively, so they're going to go with the penetration mm -hmm. of Scott and Kraft. McLemore, the pull-up, not there. Oh, the iron kind. I, oh, oh, my goodness. Icicles on that kind of iron. But how about the elevation oh, my goodness. on the jump? Oh, unbelievable. Listen, like a trampoline. You know, He's they, like on the trampoline. Wow. I know they teach you not to anticipate, but that one hung in the heavens before it fell. <laughs> Ought to be a lot of fun. We look forward to it as you look at the game reset here. Both teams in the bonus. Possession arrow is to Kansas, an eight-point lead for the Jayhawks. Smith Jr. back on the floor now as Thad Mata, hoping to be able to get him untracked here in the last five and a half minutes. How did he split that double team? And then 
Just an anticipation that was not there from LaQuinton Ross. Q didn't move to the ball. Thrown out of bounds and a turnover, the end result. Going back big picture, and, and listen, there's still plenty of time, but this game from a barometer standpoint really will help Bill Self and Pat Mott. Because oh, yeah. they're going to be able to show their guys what has to happen if you want to get back to the Final Four, who has to improve and where. Mm -hmm. Young with the dump down the river. Rejected by Williams. Well, we're seeing some significant signs of Amir Williams growing up. Mm -hmm. He's a presence inside, and that's something that has to happen and continue to be a factor for Ohio State. Defensively, he's gotten a couple of putbacks, so he's he's a, he's a shown well for himself here. Oh, again, McLemore, high flying above the rim. Well, I know one thing that needs to be addressed: yeah. baseline, out of bounds, defense. Crystal clear. You, you just cannot count on getting seven points from baseline out of bounds. That's the, the least score to ball play. It should be from a defensive standpoint. Yeah, coaches are saying they're stealing points that way, fellas. And again, the perimeter jumper not going for Ohio State. The last six, though, have come from McLemore for KU. And the Buckeyes have now missed their last seven three-point attempts. And Willie back on the deck makes it more difficult to challenge the rim. Getting back to Neil Williams, though. Oh! One of the areas where I'd like to see, what I'd do if I were him, I'd go watch film of Jeff Withy because his game is very similar. Then we take a look at this out of bounds play again, the third time this game, a beautiful screen. And honestly, if you're Amir Williams, you got to be a rim protector in this situation. You well, he had his understand. body. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. He had his body on Jeff Withy, but that's a case of not seeing that's and being aware. Elijah Johnson, by way of Las Vegas, Nevada, Cheyenne High School. Now Thursday on CBS, catch the hit drama Elementary and see why it's TV's number one new show, Johnny Lee Miller and Lucy Lou star in Elementary, Thursday only CBS. Sixty-four fifty-two, largest lead of the day for Kansas, a 15-4 run. And it's been a very methodical run, yeah. Tim. Surgeon-like in terms of the half-court execution. A Quentin Ross. And with the another rebound. Ohio State, you might recall they came up uh, short in the latter stages of that game against Duke. Same story here, but the, this collapse has been more an entire half, not just uh, the closing moments. Oh, 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 oh. Again, Williams right there winning defensively. It, it is, but, but you got to go back to what's really been the, the culprit for me is the inability of Ohio State to create turnovers. Yeah. They have not been able to get in transition offensively. They're going to struggle in the half court here in the beautiful play by Amir Williams on that block, but they're going to have to up the ante defensively moving forward to create easy baskets as they develop offensively. Johnson leaving it for Withy and he missed the chippy. Now Shannon Scott is back on the floor with Brown. Let's see if these two can uh, mix it up a little bit. They did in the first half, they have not in the second. That's a possession, they don't recognize the mismatch there. They had Deshaun Thomas on Elijah Johnson and they decided to go away from it. Smith with a floater. Again, well defended by Young. Ohio State just uh, two field goals in the last 15 minutes of this game. And the KU defense has been suffocating. When we talk about this being a benchmark game for both teams, what we're seeing in Kansas, an experienced and efficient team at both ends of the floor. And now they're milking the clock with each possession. But a layup missed by McLemore. Door is still open, but time is winding down. Kraft, just not there. And they look like tired jump shots. They're coming off the front iron almost always. Well, it's a combination of fatigue and the fact that you haven't seen the ball go in. That can deflate your adrenaline as well when you've had such an extended drought. 
that if you didn't think Kansas was one of the elite teams this year, you're finding out right now that they are. They lead by a dozen. They are just struggling offensively. And give Kansas credit. Yes. I mean, they've done a nice job taking away the primary option for Ohio State, which is the leading scorer for the Buckeyes, Deshaun Thomas. Between Rutherford and McLemore on occasion. Scott sneaking out and is blocked away beautifully by McLemore, who's just been everywhere. He and Withy have been uh, the, the, the two players that Ohio State simply could not account for. And it won't be just Ohio State that won't be able to account for those two. That's true. I mean, yeah. They're going to be a migraine matchup for just about every team they face. Lenzel Smith with a little fall away, Feathery J, the softball, and the quick timeout taken by Thad Mata. 64 54, still plenty of time in Columbus. Presented by Southwest Airlines, and obviously, Big Ben and the Steelers taking on the Bengals, the one that you'll be keeping a watch for. I'm, I'm gonna, I am going to have a bit of an interest. <laughs> it might be trivial, the interest I have. <laughs> Ohio State, if they can somehow get a stop here and convert very much right back in it. Kansas is going to be very methodical here. No reason to rush. They'll maximize as much of this shot block as possible. Oh, oh, there's Kraft doing what he does naturally. Yeah, and as much as we've talked about Ohio State's issues offensively, their defense has given them a chance in exactly. this basketball. Oh, they got Smith over the back. Was that an over the back? I think it may have been. It was, and Thad Mata is in disbelief. I thought that was a long rebound. It looked like it might be clean, but a call that goes the other way in Kansas. Gets to the free throw line. And it is the double bonus, too. Yeah, that's right. For two the Jayhawks. Shots, two shots for Young. But you could almost see that uh, in that sequence, what you were talking about earlier, when the shots aren't falling, even Deshaun Thomas aimed that shot. Mm -hmm. It wasn't his normal stroke. That's right. That's what happens. When you don't see it go in and it is prolonged, yeah. it can deflate you in a number of ways it's contagious very similar to that butler second half in the national championship game a few years ago a couple of years back mm -hmm. they just could not find it how about that win you got the witness last week Clark. was that special by it home? sure was hey. traveling on thomas as he tried to rush inside you know in a lot of ways kansas was um Kansas was a bit of a surprise making it last year, although Robinson was an outstanding player. Is this, this team, uh, in your mind, is, is built for this season's Final Four, don't you think? Well, I always start, excuse me, Greg, I always start looking at the landscape of who else is out there that could possibly get to Atlanta. And when you look at Kansas, they're one of the top four or five candidates to be there, yeah. clearly. You know, it's interesting also, you look at Kansas, you could argue, well, they're not as talented, but I, I say it all the time. You don't win with the five best players. No, you win right. with the five that play best together. Yeah. This group, from a chemistry standpoint, has a great understanding of why they win. And that's something, as a coach, you feel confident about because he trusts that they're going to make the right decisions as the game progresses. Mm -hmm. It helps when your senior leader, a guy like Travis Relaford, is as unselfish as he is. And a guy like Withy is as unselfish as he is. Right. McLemore, in terms of just outright talent, is likely the best player on the floor. And he's impacted so much by these uh, complimentary seniors. As you look at the upcoming schedule they have, and uh, that Temple game will be on CBS. That's a Sunday game. Temple beating Syracuse today. I believe Wyatt was just off the charts with 30. Actually, I think he went for 33. 33, I yeah. Think 33. Denying Beheim his 9 of his first career win. Kraft could not convert the layup. Well defended again. Nothing easy. And the free throw show continues with 61 seconds left after the foul by Amir Williams, his fourth. This is a Big Ten conference, though, fellas, that is easily the best in the country, don't you think? Without a doubt, it's got to be the best league in America. Well, on paper, it looks that way, and I don't see any reason why that would change as we get into January. When you look at Michigan and Illinois and Minnesota and Indiana, Michigan State, Iowa's in, I mean, it's going to be a real crucible going through that conference. Name a league that has three point guards playing any better than Burke, 
Kraft or Paul of Illinois. I mean, <laughs> you can't go too deep into any conference no, you to find can't. three better point guards. One you really can't. Scott almost stripped by relevance. Smith from downtown. Scott gets the offensive rebound. Kraft from downtown. He rams it home. An eight-point game. 44 ticks left. Date with destruction as you look at our game reset. Uh, the, yes, Kansas is in the double bonus, but no, it really hasn't helped. They're 12 <laughs> of 22, and that's helping Ohio State hang around. Well, yeah. again, big picture too, Clark. That's that's one of the areas you got to be concerned because as you move further in conference play along with the tournament, you have to have the ability to make those free throws here. Let's see if Kansas can do it down the stretch. foul when they do Johnson well we talked about the uh, Big Ten and how strong a conference it is at the top Michigan you know the thing that impresses me the most about them is John Beeline is playing differently coaching differently with this uh, very athletic team and how about the way Tubby Smith's team and Tom Izzo's has come along it not to mention Coach Gross in Illinois. Well, Michigan State, a big win against Texas earlier. And, and we don't even mention Indiana, who was number one yeah. in the country right. preseason. And up until that terrific game, you got to see firsthand, Clark. Mm -hmm. What a performance by Butler. Brad Stevens continues to get his guys to believe, they no matter do, who they face. They do what they do, and they are very comfortable in their skin. And that's one of the qualities of any championship caliber team, is again, as you've talked about here today, Understanding and accepting and embracing your roles, understanding how it is that we win, and then being able to go out there and do it no matter whether you're home or on the road. So a nice nice road win here, it looks like, for the Jayhawks, plus 10, only 41 seconds to go. Clark, what do you think Thad Mata is learning today about the chemistry and the style of play he's going to need to employ for Ohio State to compete with these guys. Well, he clearly knows they're best when the pace is fast and they're able to disrupt the opponent defensively to create open court opportunities. Ross gets the layup. The other aspect, he knows he's going to have to continue to get post presence, and Amir Williams showed himself well in that regard. And at some point, this game is still about putting the ball in the basket. And you have to be able to do that with some consistency. Aaron Kraft's pressure just forced yeah. another turnover. And, and he also knows that most teams don't have Mac Lamorne with him. Right. So yeah, yeah. as he goes to the conference play, he's not going to see that type of impact on the interior and the perimeter in Ohio State. Holidays. Yeah, yeah, we get them all out there. I like to be specific, though, sometimes. Yeah. I just like to give a little personal love. Agreed. You cannot say that enough. <laughs> Does this mean I've got to pick up the check again next week? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you knew. Oh, man. They left that out in the seminar. There's Thomas. Two strong. Oh, oh, oh. a well-designed play to get an open three for their best perimeter shooter. But sadly, that's been the tone of the entire second half. And Thomas with an air ball. You know what, too? Oftentimes, you see a team consent consistently miss these open shots, and you're saying what's wrong. A lot of shooting has to do with rhythm. Yeah. And defensively, Kansas has disrupted the timing and the spacing for Ohio State this entire game. Mm -hmm. So they've never felt comfortable making jump shots on the perimeter. Jamari Trailer at the free throw line. And here's the uh, Ohio State schedule. And, of course, they take on all comers and in a league that is so strong. After the non-conference game, it's Nebraska then at Illinois at Purdue. And by the way, Iowa is no layup either. How about the yeah, job for him? Graham McCaffrey. He yeah, has done an incredible coach. job with the Hawkeyes. Mm -hmm. Aaron White, the super soft of that team, has had so much to do with their success. But everywhere Franny's been, he's been mm -hmm. successful. More, more recently, of course, at Siena before taking the job uh, at uh, Iowa. Ross is fouled, and that's from three-point range by Young. And Bill Self is like, I love you, but there was no need for that. Not at all. That's what we call a brain-neutral play. Yeah, you could he could parked it and wasn't thinking. And you love his energy, but in that case, you basically want to keep the clock moving. You're not interested in seeing it stop at all. 
I don't know of any coach, though, that can be upset with a player and yet love the player as much as Bill. He, he <laughs> you know what I mean? I yeah. think he got that from Eddie. I, mean, I think he got that from Eddie Sutton through the years. It, it, it doesn't last long. Usually it involves uh, one quick line, yeah. and then there's a love pet, and we move on. That's the way it should be. Get yeah. your point across and make sure they know you care. Uh -huh. and get to the next play. And you talked about the mental letdown there by Kevin Young. The performance he's had. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God only take one field goal the entire game. Yeah. How but to have the impact he's had on both the offensive and defensive side of the field. How many times did he deke the shot to make an alley oop for with it? I mean, he's got that down to a science. And the quick foul given up. And that really goes back to what you talked about, Clark, in terms of them understanding and embracing their role. Exactly. His, his responsibility is not to score the basketball. Oftentimes, it's to be a ball movement and a defensive presence. I think his greatest attribute is the energy he brings. He's a smart basketball player, but he brings contagious energy in terms of what he does. And he's selfless in how he goes about his work. And I say it all the time, it's not about your stats, it's about your impact. And he impacts the game when he takes the floor. Withy, who had a triple-double back in November against um, San Jose State, with a double-double today, 10 points, 10 boards, and after the free throw, make it 11 points and 10 boards. And, uh, another young man that played very well off the bench, Nadir Tharp, checking in for Withy. Little uh, defense for offense to close it out. Scott is going to give them highlight, and they're going to hope that they get the hoop and the harm. Shannon Scott on a blow-by, and that makes it interesting. How about Potentially this? a two-possession game. There's the bump, and there's McLemore <laughs> playing with it, although it appeared as though that shot might have. Oh, he tipped No, he tipped it in. Yeah, he yeah, actually he tipped, tipped it in. It may have been too hard. It looked like it was going to be too hard. No question. Without the deflection, it doesn't go in off the window. So you knock this free throw down. It's a two-possession game. He just did, and that makes things a little more interesting as Thompson Comes back onto the floor for Thomas. And I guarantee you, Bill Self's going to be livid because his team has mentally checked out yeah. the last few minutes. Just not, a, the attention to detail is not there, nor the focus. Thompson with the giveaway foul, his third, without any time coming off the clock. And now, see, that to me should be a violation. I don't think you should be able to foul without the ball being inbounded. That's another one of those areas where... You, you shouldn't be allowed to do that. So next week, you and I are going to have one or two. <laughs> each of us can have two oh, yeah. rules that we'd like to discuss. If, it give, if we have room within the game, we'll talk Absolutely. about it. Uh, that's the, least, yeah. that's the yeah. least you should get because you get to work with me. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, you should each get to change the rules at yeah. least a couple No, no, times. not to. We'll, we'll discuss it. We'll, we'll debate like, one or two of our it, pet peeves yeah. on the rules. Yeah. I'll just be your humble host, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As you see, Withy check it out of the game. Another tremendous performance for uh, the All-America in San Diego. 14 points, 10 boards. Uh, that one off Kraft's hands, but Ross launches, and again, it comes up short, and that should just about do it. Kansas. Number eight with a bullet after this win against seventh-ranked Ohio State. For Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony, Tim Brando saying so long from Columbus. Our final 74-66. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Home of the 2013 Men's National Championship. And tonight on CBS, two episodes of Made in Jersey and 48 Hours Mystery.